Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Boot and Wildlife. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you already saw our feature film, The Hidden Wilderness, which is a feature length documentary all about New Jersey wildlife. And to my knowledge, there's never been something done like this before. So it was really, just a really fun, exciting experience. And I had a few comments saying how I got some of these shots and people wondering how I made this. So today, I thought I'd show you how I got a lot of these shots, how I found these animals, and yeah, how I basically made this entire thing. So be sure to subscribe and hope you guys enjoy. This all began back in 2018, when me and my friend Connor made a discovery. We were both in middle school at the time and shared a passion for wildlife. Our curiosity for nature drove us to a small creek behind our school, where crayfish, garter snakes, and many other creatures thrived. This creek flowed into the Rockway River, and while exploring, we found a baby snapping turtle. It is here where some of the earliest shots in the film were taken. The footage I got that day on an old iPhone was edited into a short video, and from there, Boot and Wildlife was born. From then on, Connor and I went back to the river and the surrounding woodlands to catch fish, search for salamanders, and stalk white-tailed deer. After that summer of exploring, I was excited to learn more about the wildlife of New Jersey, so I looked on YouTube to try and find documentaries about the species that thrive here. I was surprised to find out that there was practically nothing about local wildlife. Any of the documentaries I saw were about faraway places like Alaska and Africa. I soon discovered that many people believe those were the only places where wildlife could be found in our modern age. However, based on my observations, they couldn't be further from the truth. Many people, even the locals I talked to, had no idea about the biodiversity of wildlife that thrived here. From falcons to eagles, to bears to deer, the list goes on. Even today, every time I come out here, I seem to find something new, something incredible. After the realization that practically no one knew about the wildlife here, I made it a goal of mine to create a film all about the wildlife here in Booton, New Jersey. Making a feature-length wildlife documentary in between high school and a job would prove difficult. Almost all the free time I had was spent on creating this film. The four years of filming and editing this movie taught me a lot about wildlife cinematography. One of the things I learned while filming this movie was the importance of a lens. In order to get many of the shots that I wanted, I would have to get a long lens. Alright guys, so for filming The Hidden Wilderness, this is one of the lenses I used a lot. This is a 500 millimeter lens with a teleconverter attached to it, so it goes about a thousand millimeters away. And I use this a lot for a lot of birds like the grebes, sometimes the eagles, a lot of birds and sometimes foxes and stuff. The animals that are really skittish that I can't get up close to. This lens helped a lot. I used it to shoot the, uh, the squirrel mating sequence because during mating they were a little bit cautious. They wouldn't let me get too close and this really helped me a lot. I also put camouflage duct tape over it. The camouflage duct tape was just a bit of help. It camouflaged, helped me blend in a bit. But yeah, this is the lens that I used for a lot of the scenes in the film. And this is also the camera that was used. Canon EOS 4000D, so 
A lot of the scenes that you see in the film, the egrets, the eagles, the herons, some of the turtle sequences, um, trying to think, the fox, a lot of it was shot using this setup. It's a pretty basic best setup, not the best, but it gets the job done. With such a large lens, I needed a sturdy tripod so that the videos would not come out shaky. I used the KR BV30L tripod, which proved to be very useful while shooting wildlife, especially on windy days. It wasn't just cameras that I learned about, I also had to become more in tune with nature. Whitetails played a vital part in this film, since they are the only big game animal around. I learned about their behaviors, diets, and I also picked up some tracking techniques which helped me get some up-close experiences. When you head out to film wildlife, things don't always go according to plan. One day in May, when I was out filming white-tailed deer, a rainstorm came through. I didn't check the weather, and because of that, I was stuck under the bridge for about an hour. It taught me one lesson that I will never forget. The importance of weather. Whenever you go out to film or even photograph wildlife, always be sure to check the weather. The weather won't only affect you, but also the species that you wish to film. Back in November, I went out hiking, trying to find some of the deer that I had seen in October, particularly the one with the broken antler. To my surprise, I found him dead, having been eaten by coyotes. The cause of death was unknown, but it was still sad and interesting at the same time. It fascinated me to see maggots, vultures, foxes, and many other creatures make use of this carcass. It taught me an important lesson that here in the wilderness, death is an extremely important part to life. Every death fuels new life, and the cycle continues. One thing I wanted to show in the hidden wilderness were the four seasons. Summer, fall, winter, and spring. Something Bhutan faces all of. So here is how I film the spiders for the hidden wilderness. I have an 18 to 55 millimeter lens with a macro filter attached to it. Here on my EOS 90D, my main camera, where I used to get some shots later in the project. I also have this nice LED light because the spiders only come out at night, so that's really the only way to film them. And this might not be the best setup, I could use a better lens for spiders, but this is the most cost effective and it got some pretty good shots of the spiders, so yeah, this is the setup I used for filming the spider scenes. For most movies, the scripting process is done well before the rest of the film is produced. However, with a wildlife film, you have no idea what you're going to come across out there. Because of this, I had to write the script both during and after production. Finally, once the script is all put together, and I have all the right footage, it's time to start editing. Editing is easily the most strenuous process since it involves long hours staring at a computer screen. For this movie, I used Final Cut Pro to edit together the footage. This app had a lot of features, and allowed me to better tell the story of the creatures here in Bhutan. 
The Canada Goose flying sequence was shot in 60 frames per second. While editing, I wanted it to look more cinematic, so I slowed it down. With Final Cut Pro, I can speed up or slow down footage, using the certain settings. Another thing I learned while filming is that if you want to get more professional flying footage, you have to use a higher frame rate. My newer camera, the Canon EOS 90D, allows me to shoot in 119 frames per second. Another example of playing with the speed is the shot of the sun rising. For that, I use time lapse. I let my camera sit out at the bridge for about 4 minutes to capture the sun rising. Since 4 minutes is too long a time for people to wait for the sun to rise in a movie, I had to speed it up. The final part was adding the music. Music is a very important part to movies since they help enhance the story. Since I didn't personally know any composers and had virtually no budget, I had to turn to free online music. While scrolling through YouTube, I found a channel called Scott Buckley. Here there were hundreds of majestic soundtracks. You can check out his YouTube channel in the description and hear some of these songs for yourself. What? Finally, the film was completed and uploaded to the Boone Wildlife channel on September 22nd, 2022. To my surprise, many people love this. The movie received almost 10,000 views in a few weeks and now stands at 53,000 and growing. Well, like they say, when one journey ends, another must begin. And this has been a pretty crazy four years, pretty incredible. I'm really glad you, that you guys enjoyed the final product, The Hidden Wilderness. And it's not going to stop here. It's 2023 now. I just woke up. It's actually New Year's Day when I'm recording this. January 1st, 2023, and we're going to see what happens. It's going to be a pretty wild year. Going to go on a lot more new adventures, going to see some new creatures, and I hope to take you guys on every step of the way so we can learn about some of the wildlife here in America from the backyard to beyond. So be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. If you haven't already, Go check out The Hidden Wilderness 